Welcome back, coaches, to another 10 Questions with, powered by Honda. Our guest today is 11-year big leaguer, um, second Canadian to ever start a World Series, um, 2015 Pan Am Games gold medalist, uh, second highest or third highest drafted Canadian of all time, leads the Rockies. He's a club, the Rockies club record holder for innings, strikeouts, and wins by a lefty. We're very excited to have Jeff Francis today. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks, TJ. Good to be here. All right, we'll jump right into it. First question comes from Andrew. As a lefty, what are your thoughts on the new three batter minimum? As a starter, it wouldn't matter much, but as a reliever, would it change your mindset coming into a ball game? I think it would. I think, uh, that, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time as a bullpen pitcher, but uh, being removed from the game a little while, I, I'm more of a fan now. I do like the rule changes. I like the universal DH. To me, the three batter minimum rule is an effort to move the game along a bit. I think it's better for the game. Um, it does kind of eliminate that sort of specialist in the bullpen, but maybe those specialists just have to adapt a bit and, and you know, be able to get right-handers out the way right-handers do. So uh, I, I enjoy the rule. I think someone like me, a left-hander pitching out of the bullpen, it might affect them a little more, but uh, I enjoy the rule. Awesome. Next question comes from eight-year-old Liam. What are some of the best arm and shoulder exercises for a young pitcher? Uh, well, this is something that probably has changed a lot. I mean, even in the five years since I've quit doing those things. Um, Post-injury, for me, post-surgery, there was uh, some posterior shoulder stretches that I did every day. Um, it would be difficult to demonstrate or even explain them without a, a professional around. But, you know, I, I, I would seek out counsel um, from the people who know what they're doing in this respect. You know, it's um, things like two, three pound weights, um, lifting them forward side. Uh, the body blade was a big, was a big uh, tool for me doing shoulder exercises, um, but really find someone who knows what they're talking about and, and, and trust those people and, and find, find good opinions. Not, not from a retired left-handed pitcher who didn't, hasn't pitched baseball for five years. Awesome, man. Next question comes from Rob. How often should my eight-year-old and I be tossing without fatiguing his arm? It's hard to limit him, and he always wants to be throwing. Play for a little bit every day. If, if, if people want to play baseball, they should play baseball. But, um, you know, the moment they say their shoulder's tired, then, then take a break. You know, try something else. Try hitting, try fielding grounders, hitting pop flies, or uh, playing something else. You know, shooting hockey pucks in the garage. Um, put the badminton net in the front lawn, crying out loud. You know, there's a million things to do, especially in the summer. So um, never been a believer in just doing one thing. Um, you're not going to make a pitcher at eight years old, 10 years old, even 12. Um, I mean, the key is for just to, to help your kid love baseball. And if they sign up again next year, that's a, that's a good season. Absolutely. Next question comes from Brian. At what point, kind of age-wise, did you take it to the next level competitively to reach your goals? Uh, I made a decision at about 17 when I got to grade 11 that uh, I wasn't going to play anything else. Uh, when I was 16 was the first year I played kind of serious tra travel baseball, I guess if that's what you call it, but a, a team where we would practice, you know, three, four times a week and play four or five games a week and, you know, from April to September, we play a hundred games. That was a, the, really the first year that I, that I did anything like that. And, um, you know, 16, 17 years older, I dropped other sports and really made an effort to, to make something out of baseball. Awesome. Next question comes from Elliot. During your professional baseball career, what was the most challenging hurdle you faced that you didn't see coming? Definitely injuries, I, I think. It, it's not that you don't see it coming. It's just that in some ways you don't think it can happen to you. You, you know, you, you see other players go down with injuries or even freak injuries that you think, oh, they're just accidents and you can do your best to avoid them. But, you know, I, I had shoulder surgery about halfway through my career and I, I had to miss a whole year and a half of, of baseball. And, you know, that, that was a hurdle that, that I had to learn a lot about how, about how to get through and what I had to do to, to prepare to pitch uh, post-surgery. So, you know, it was, a, it was a big hurdle. Um, 
it was a big challenge and it was something that, you know, a lot of pitchers don't come the other side of. So, uh, you know, I feel very fortunate that I was able to do that. Awesome. Next question comes from our friends at Baseball Canada. Similarities or differences between starting a World Series game or starting for your country in a gold medal game? Well, uh, certainly more eyes on you if you're starting in the World Series. Um, not that you really feel that, I guess, but um, you've probably been thinking about pitching in a World Series since you're five years old, if, if you've been watching baseball your whole life like I had. Um, Pressure-wise, I wouldn't say there was much difference. You know, I, I think anytime you go into a game that you really want to win, any pressure you face comes from yourself. And if, whether you're pitching for Canada in a Pan Am final or you're pitching for Colorado in a game one of the World Series, you, you want to win those games just as much. And uh, pressure-wise, I wouldn't say there was much difference. But um, certainly the, the, the amount of eyes you feel on you um, – at one level or another is different, but um, that could be different for, for anybody. Yeah, both amazing experiences. Next question comes from Scott. What do you know now that you wish you knew when you were drafted? It's a good question. I, in the five years since I quit playing baseball, you know, I've, I've, I've remained a fan of baseball and I, I still watch baseball a lot. It's, one thing, one thing I do either, you know, maybe regret or I look back on that I, that I could have done better is, is had more perspective or, or even, you know, um, a vision of, of what some of my teammates had come from. You know, a lot of these guys come from Latin American countries and especially in the minor leagues, they speak very little English. They come from a very different culture. Everything's so different for them. And, and, and I don't think I had a good perspective on that. When I was a young player, I was, you know, very focused on what I was doing and um, what I had to do to get better. But, you know, some of the conversations I could have had with some guys that, that I could have learned more about them and, and learn more about what they were coming from. Um, that's something I felt I could have done better. And if, if I had maybe known that, like if, you know, in, in a alternate reality, if I could explain to younger me um, what, more, what more you could get out of baseball, I think that would be it. Awesome. Next question comes from Bridget. Did you play other sports growing up? And if so, what are your thoughts on multi-sport uh, athletes at a young age? I played everything growing up. I was a sport junkie. I, whatever the season was, whatever was on TV, I was playing along while I watched TV, whether it was baseball, um, basketball, football. I was tackling rolled up foams in the rec room downstairs. Um, bugging my dad to get out and play catch on the street, you know, playing street hockey on rollerblades. Um, and I think that's good for kids. I, I think, I think it's good for, for kids of all ages to, to, to be good at everything, you know, and to, to practice everything. I, I haven't met anybody who's in my position or, or even, even more accomplished who, who believes kids should be choosing sports at a young age. And, you know, whatever that, whatever that age is you need to choose, I think is a matter of opinion. But many people would agree if, if you're choosing sports at eight, nine, 10 years old, it's, it's probably a little soon. Um, you know, I think, I think you're starting to see now older kids and even, even adults who've done nothing but play baseball since they're eight years old. And, and yeah, they've got tools and they can do things, but maybe they're just not as well-rounded or they they feel like they've put too many eggs in one basket early on. There's a lot of pressure on them to succeed. Um, there's a lot of drawbacks, I think, to me for, for choosing sports really early. Yeah, it's crazy. We've asked that question to, I think, every single person on. And I don't – I'm very curious to see this question, asking people this question 10 years from now because everybody is picking a sport now. Yeah. Like everybody who's ever been at the higher level is – played every sport growing up. So I just find it so fascinating that everybody's so consumed with picking one. And I think it's a product of people our age that are still playing, that, that it wasn't really an option when we were kids at 10 years old to play only baseball or only basketball, you know? It's, but yeah, I think you're right. In another 10 years, you'll, you'll see people in the NBA and in the MLB who've done nothing but play those sports their whole life. 
All right, next question from Scott. Do you have any thoughts on the best time to incorporate live pitching in youth baseball? Um, usually when you get kids at a very, you know, young age, there's a lot of walks, you know. Have you, have you given any thought to when you think might be the best time to incorporate live pitching? I don't know. I've got a son who plays baseball. He's Right now he's eight, so he this year if there was a baseball season, he'd be in um, – second year of rookie which is pitching machine so i haven't seen the the pitching level of baseball yet um with at least with my own children um my daughter does play softball she's 10 and it's dreadful if you don't have a pitcher who can throw strikes right and it's i mean it's dreadful for even the players there's it's either a strikeout or a walk so you know, even at 10 years old, I was of the mind that maybe they should have a softball pitching machine just so that you get batted balls and you get you get more of a game. Um, but I, I don't know, like whatever level that is where you can get some kids who throw strikes, you know, because then you're playing more of a, of a, of a baseball game. Um, maybe leagues should be more uh, flexible with ha- switching back and forth pitching machine to pitcher. Um, and it's not even good for a pitcher's confidence if if he goes out there and walks everybody and walks off the mound in tears right like that kid might never pitch again even though it might just be a matter of confidence so there's no right answer I mean right now kids start pitching at nine and ten I think and um, for some kids it's good for some it isn't and maybe a kid who can't quite throw strikes yet doesn't pitch and then never tries to pitch because he just never did it so maybe the leagues could just be a little bit more flexible and Pitch it, putting a pitching machine in there if they need to. Absolutely. Last question comes from Sky. What is the best road city for food? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, two of the best meals I've ever had in my life, believe it or not, were in Detroit, Michigan, which is insane, right? But my favorite road city always to visit was San Francisco. And not always just for food, it was just, number one, it's always sunny in California. San Francisco is never too hot. Um, So you always wanted to go outside, you always wanna go walk around. And there's a million things going on in San Francisco. There is good food, there's good breakfast, particularly in San Francisco, um, which, you know, some of the teams I was on would have sort of a crew of guys that go get breakfast early in the morning, so, Um, but just, no shortage of neighborhoods to walk around in in San Francisco and um, beautiful scenery, sunshine. To me, you can't beat it. I miss it. That's uh, one of the things that I do miss about playing baseball is going to San Francisco. Yeah, no doubt, man. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming by. Um, obviously, your career was it was so incredible and uh, what you're doing now with the junior national team and some stuff out in the London area with the Great Lake Canadians. Um, we're really, country of Canada is very fortunate to have you and uh, we're very fortunate to have you here. So uh, be well, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you down the road. All right. Thanks, TJ.